Beste vriendinnen en vrienden, beste troegstieke zwaarheidszoekers, beste slimme lieven en lieuwinnen. Uh, toch, toch vergeet dat altijd, nog ze zijn het voor mij enorm, enorm belangrijk, lieuwinnen, maar uh, nog die oude manier van denken. Goed, beste, nee, dus slimme lieven en lieuwinnen. Uh, Gino van uh, Friends for Proof. Uh, zoals beloofd daar pas, we, waren, uh, we hebben daar pas dus met Michelle Fuding en Michael Kajeko dus uh, al heel wat vragen beantwoord dat ze het channel heeft, uh, Michelle. Uh, we hebben daar dus dat is deel 1 en ik heb dan beloofd aan jullie dat we nu in gingen gaan op deel 2. Uh, voor de mensen die deel 1 nog niet gezien hebben, hey, ga dan alstublieft ook gaan kijken naar daar, want er zijn er interessante uh, vragen die hier staan zijn met zeer interessante uh, antwoorden uh, die heel wat verheldering kunnen brengen bij mensen die nog zo twijfelen of die uh, bepaalde informatie zoeken. Dus hier gaan we met deel 2 mensen. We gaan dus het scherm delen zoals altijd. Voilà, dat is Michelle Vierding en Michael Kajeko en we waren hier gestopt hé, en we gaan nu verder. En ze gingen juist de vraag stellen hoe gaat het nu verder met de wereld in de komende maanden? 12 months. Because I don't necessarily see what we're talking about here with this the bad players happening like tomorrow. I do see it as a process. Um, and they said over the next six to 12 months, there will be more forensic auditing of the election process. Dus uh, wat ik al de hele tijd zeg, dus uh, volgens mij gaan ze de vijfde voor ieder staten van de uh, alle staten van de USA gaan volgens mij forensic audits hebben, zoals Arizona. Texas heeft al de goedkeuring gegeven, Georgia is nu in de loop van de goedkeuring te geven voor daarmee te starten. Dus volgens mij gaan alle vijftig uh, staten van Amerika die forensic audit uh, uh, krijgen. Om echt uh, ja, on 100% of 300% te bewijzen in feite dat uh, alles gebaseerd is op de fraude to bring out more bad players and and i said how will this look around the world like to the masses so you know while we're all sitting here waiting and wondering they said that whilst the usa is re-establishing a solid baseline the rest of the world will see many distractions which are designed to create a social movement of change mm. This is a... Dat misschien eens een keer stoppen, dus terwijl dat in de USA met al die forensic audits eh, volledig daar bij hun stabiliteit probeert terug te herwinnen bij de mensen eh, over dus de verkiezingen en eh, wie dat er in feite ratten zijn en wie dat er het finaal misschien nog een paar goede zijn die daar, die daar rondlopen, gaat ondertussen wereldwijd in feite door eh, al die zaken die we, die we doorkrijgen gaan er ondertussen natuurlijk veel uh, protesten en andere zaken gebeuren bij ons, zo, zodat het sociaal niveau en het reddingsniveau hier bij ons ondertussen wereldwijd zal uh, wijzen. Een controlled psychological operation to, to deprogram people so that they can operate from a position of self-governance and sovereignty. Is getting them used. Dus we moeten gedeprogrammeerd worden in, in wereldwijd zodat dat we inderdaad geloven dat we soevereine mensen zijn, he? echte soevereine mensen. He? En dat we dus inderdaad uh, volledig gaan kunnen ook, uh, laten we zeggen, regionaal voor onszelf kunnen uh, zorgen. En uiteraard, we gaan heel veel moeten wijzigen, heel veel moeten veranderen mensen, maar werkelijk volgens mij op elk niveau moet, moet bijna alles wijzigen. En, uh, maar dus we moeten in feite meer en meer sterker beginnen zijn en, en voelen dat we dat inderdaad gaan kunnen. Op het moment dat we daarvan overtuigd zijn, gaan we volop starten met alles uh, uh, te gaan veranderen. To this idea that there isn't going to be somebody telling us what to do. It's going to be down to you to just self-govern, you know, your own actions. Right. Good. Because a lot of people are like, well, when is Trump coming back? And I can, mm -hmm. you know, I can see your point. And I've kind of, kind of been tapping into this as well, that maybe he doesn't come back. Maybe he's part, like you're saying, uh, a consortium that basically is teaching us how to connect and, and be yeah. our own sources of, yeah. uh, you know, direction and, you yeah. know, we don't need somebody to be over us. Like, uh, we have... The world is set up for to be clear for the new world and uh, for the Great Awakening. And, uh... In feite is er daar geen andere weg in, maar goed, het moet natuurlijk ook allemaal gebeuren in, het fysieke, in de fysieke omgeving. Hé. Dus die charters moeten getekend worden, waar we in deel 1 over gepraat hebben. Hé. Wereldwijd, hé. dat zijn de charters voor de mensen die het eerste deel 1 nog niet gehoord hebben. Hé. Vooral Nisara Hisara, maar dan, we noemen het eigenlijk Worldwide Charters. In feite zal waarschijnlijk geen Nisara Hisara niet meer noemen. 
Nee, dat eigenlijk voor ieder zo'n getekend zijn, eh, voor vrede, uw vrede, uw wereld enzovoort. Eh, Ach, luister naar deel 1 mensen. Eh. Eh, maar het komt erop neer in feite dat, eh, dat ja, Trump eh, volop bezig is, maar niet meer zal terugkomen. Of in, in zekere zin, als president van de USA, dat, eh, die zal een heel andere functie ook eh, beoefenen om ons eh, wereldwijd te begeleiden naar de eh, Great Awakening. Ja, yeah, been in the past. But in the past, we needed it because. Sure. Uh, before we had Starlink, we had no way of monitoring. So people could just be like running around if we didn't have a system in place of some sort. Mm -hmm. So really the Starlink will now be the way that everything gets monitored in the future. So we won't need actual people, it sounds like. Hmm. Now, this... now, I've seen some people in the chat say, well, is this basically a new world order? I don't I don't get that. This is uh, something... Ja, dus is alles zo door Starlink, dus er iemand naar gesproken, dus al die satellieten met het quantum, uh, quantum uh, computersysteem, ja, nog. Ik ben een IT dummy, kan, kan uh, een aantal van jullie gaan misschien meer begrijpen, hey, maar goed, voor mij iets, iets enorm gigantisch dat ze gecreëerd hebben, volgens mij ook met buitenaardse en energieën en buitenaardse technologieën die er aan mee geholpen hebben. Hey, dus en, en op die manier hey, ons, ons begeleiden, op die manier hey, de Starlink zou kunnen kijken eh, als er inderdaad nef, ne, negatieve, kwaadaardige zaken zouden gebeuren, had dat direct opgevat worden dan gaan we die, die grenzen niet meer nodig hebben al die toestanden militairen waarschijnlijk op termijn ook niet meer nodig hebben hey, het zal allemaal direct gezien en wij zelf van anders trillen, dus we gaan direct ook meer anders aanvoelen, oei oei, is daar iets niet correct we, we gaan daar direct op, op ingrijpen ook niet meer zoals nu, elke keer een huisje nee, 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 laat maar doen, nee, 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 nee. Nee, nee. We zijn terug in een, een, een complete, laten we zeggen, uh, um, kleine, kleine uh, micromaatschappijen die heel goed voor elkaar zorgen, zoals de vroegere stammen, hey, die met wijzen, hey, met, met oudere wijzen, doordat er naartoe geluisterd wordt en zo verder. Hey, dat soort zaken gaan terugkomen, maar uiteraard dan met hoogtechnologische instrumenten. Dus uh, maar eigenlijk het idee van, 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 van hoe dat je omgaat met elkaar het zal hetzelfde zijn, maar we gaan alleen maar andere technologieën hebben om ons te helpen. He, dus, uh, en dus, dus uh, Michael zei hier, we gaan straks eens verder luisteren. He, en, met jou, er komt hier in de chat he, verschillende mensen. He, dat is het voordeel van zo'n live chat, dat zou ik ook graag hebben. He, die zeggen, ja, maar ja, is dat dan ook niet zoals de New World Order? Dus de, de smaap, he, de, de slecht trekken. Maar uiteraard niet, het is niet de bedoeling niet meer door de bestaan te controleren wat dat we allemaal doen of ons punt te geven, wat dat we mogen en wat dat we niet mogen. Het idee is in feite dat het vooral is om ons te beschermen. Much higher. It's not, it's not a, that would be a downgrade. And I don't see a downgrade coming. We're definitely moving to higher levels. So, so the way that the yeah. difference is that the new world order would be using that system to control you. But from what they've been saying here, the charters that they that they're talking about are all about creating sovereignty and peace and freedom. So it's they're not doing it to create a system of watching you yeah. and and controlling where you move and travel. If anything, but it's logic that that there are many people on that way think, but not for him. Starting the system with the satellites is they begun in effect for me. Vanuit de New World Order. Dus de slechttrekken hadden ook datzelfde idee van inderdaad die complete controle te doen op ons, maar dan natuurlijk in de zin, in de hele, hele negatieve zin. Ja, om ons dus echt letterlijk niet alleen slaven te zijn zoals dat we nu zijn, maar echt te slaven. Maar dus de, 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 de alliantie van de, de Whiteheads, de witte krachten, wel juist omgekeerde, wel juist dat systeem gebruikt om ons eigenlijk ja, meer vrijheid te geven en inderdaad kwaadaardige of andere uh, zaken in, direct eruit te halen. I think the new system could open up borders so you don't need them anymore. Voilà. You could actually travel freely because yeah. the system would know where you are at all times in a good way. Oh, ik kan er al aan dromen, mensen. Gewoon weg, ja. Kun je kun, kun je voorstellen dat je gewoon geen grenzen niet meer hebt, geen paspoort, en dan dat je gewoon... Oh, ongelooflijk, mensen. Ongelooflijk. Allee, ja, ik kan stoppen met dromen. Hé, maar goed, ja, een keer dromen is ook niet slecht. Hé. Uh, alhoewel dat ik, dat ik het echt wel voel dat het op die manier gaat zijn. Het, het voelt zeer goed aan mensen voor mij. Not in a bad way. Um, I also think that the new world order plan has been taken over by the White Hats and completely ja. flipped as well. Ja. So what they wanted to do in the bad sense of the word, the old system, they completely flipped it all so that the, it will now line up with our new levels of consciousness. And when I've asked about this before, about this this fear, if you like, of, of people thinking it's new world order, don't forget it's it's 
been programmed to a much higher level of consciousness and they've told me that it's got stops and balances in there and it will as we grow in consciousness so it will grow in consciousness as well that's my understanding and so it can't go back to a lower level of consciousness which is about control it will always be growing as we grow in consciousness towards freedom and oneness um, because it's a very different type of system the way it's programmed to say the internet we've got right now so we haven't got to confuse the two technologies because they're very very different uh, well, there's and a little, little bit of confusion in the chat so just I, okay I know we're trying to try yeah. to clean stuff up for people and people get really confused yeah uh, and get a little an antsy as we know uh yeah. when you when you put stuff out like this so you have to like we're, we're way ahead and we're seeing this stuff but some people are kind of like Hello, you see Michael said in the chat, van even off the chat, so to say, uh, uh, that heel wat mensen natuurlijk, ja, als je daarover begint natuurlijk, zien direct, allee, heel wat mensen zitten nou, dan direct op een negativiteitslijn en zien direct van, oh, ja, ja, natuurlijk, dat was origineel het plan van de New World Order. En origineel zijn zij gestart inderdaad met die satellieten. En origineel gingen ze ons inderdaad volledig controleren en volledig in punten steken. En, en dan mag je dit niet meer, dat niet meer, dat niet meer, tot dat je uh, finaal in een concentratiekamp zit en dat ze dan letterlijk zoals vroeger eh, eh, om, om zeep helpen. Eh, dat is uiteraard allemaal de plannen van vroeger, maar we zijn daarover mensen. We zitten met een positieve tijdslijn en we zijn stelletjes aan, eh, gaan de zaken open. Dus eh, adult mensen, blijf positief, denk in positieve tijdslijn, maar als je negatieve tijdslijn zit, eh, ga je ook die negativiteit blijven aantrekken in je leven. You know, yeah. you have to take them by the hand and help them out a little bit. So, people are saying, so Trump is not coming back, it's like, we're we're talking on a higher level. Mm. It's if if Trump were to come back, that's the old system. Yeah. So he's yeah. not coming back to support an old system. Mm. He's coming back in a way that's far more advanced. So try and wrap your mind around that. Just kind of like. In fact, that it comes now with me up. Can I get it? I don't know if you just spoke about that. Mensen op 20 januari van 2029. Also, dus de laatste keer met de met de. Uh, Air, Air Force One, he dus vertrok uh, naar Florida, naar, naar zijn naar woning in feite, he, heeft hij een toespraak gehouden. Op dat moment op het einde heeft hij gezegd, you, I will be back in some kind of, of, of way. He kwam erop neer dat hij zegt, op een of andere wijze ga ik zeker terugkomen. Dus uh, ja, dat klopt natuurlijk wel met wat we nu horen. Op een of andere wijze, ja inderdaad, hij wist dat natuurlijk al. Hij gaat terugkomen als coördinator binnen allee, als een van de teamleden in feite, binnen die globale alliantie die ons naar vrede, vrijheid en, en wilde en, en, en vriendschap wil brengen. En, en dat is eigenlijk zijn nieuwe functie. Dus vandaar dat hij dan al zei, en nu komt het allemaal bij mij naar boven, dat hij dan zei, ik kom terug op, op een of andere manier, maar je gaat blij zijn, dat hij gezegd. Ja, ik kan hem nog heel goed zo horen. Be with that a little bit and see if that works for you, but that's, that's what we're trying to relay here. It's, mm -hmm. it's a higher level of coming back in a way that's is way more advanced than being the person that's over us, controlling us, because we're, like you're saying, we're, we're at a level we don't need that anymore with Starlink. It's going to help us to you know, make that transition and move forward. Yeah, it's it's very, it, when you think of it in the current world that, or the world that we've had, then anything that, that feels like it's up here and it's looking at us feels scary. I get that. It's taken me a little while to kind of come around to this idea as well. But when I've been question, questioning about it, mm -hmm. they've explained to me that the new system as it's programmed in a way, it's got all these stops and balances in there, so nobody can control you, because again, all the countries are signed into it, into the charter, don't forget the charter, and they have to abide by the charter, which we understand to be Nassara Jassara. Dus in feite zijn er enorme stops in die starling, zegt ze, in het hele systeem, nee, zodat er niemand een ander kan controleren. Nee, je denkt aan de charter, zegt ze, die wereldwijd getekend zijn volgens haar op dit moment, met, alle, met, met, met heel veel landen. Nee, dus de Nisara Hisara van vroeger, nee, maar die nu eigenlijk een wereldwijde charter is, een soort wereldwijd akkoord. Eh, 
Maar dat is in feite, iedereen in feite die Starling mee, mee zeggenschap heeft in feite. Dus het kan eigenlijk niemand dat spel eigenlijk overmeesteren. Het is allemaal via de charter in feite, is het allemaal, is het eigenlijk militair apparaat en andere apparaat in feite, alliantie en wereldwijd er allemaal voor een stukje in. Dus het is een kwestie eigenlijk voor ons vrijheid te geven en niet meer voor ons eigenlijk in, in, in miserie te brengen mensen. Dus uh, op het moment dat we daarover zijn, uh, ja, dan, dan zijn we weg. Hè. And part of Nasara Jasara is obviously about the peace. There has yeah, to be really peace, really. otherwise yeah. you can't be part of it. Yeah. So this is a peace template. The charters are part of a whole template of peace. Mm. And the Starlink is the way you monitor it. So you don't have the need for personnel in the old sense of the word. The military won't have anything to do, hopefully, in the future, because there won't be any war anymore. Because the yeah. new... Doordat, dus die, die charters zijn wereldwijd getekend in feite, dus die vrede, vrede en allerlei andere dingen, dus de Nisara Hesara, maar in, in, in wereldwijde charter in feite, die getekend zijn door die, door die landen. Nee? En daar heb je de Starlink in feite, want dat, iedereen die in die charter zit, is daar, is daar mede mede beheerder van zou je kunnen zeggen of mede controleerder van in feite van dat systeem en die Starlink controleerde eigenlijk alles wat er gebeurt op de aardbol in feite zodanig dat inderdaad een nefaste negatieve kwaadaardige wezens eh, of mensen in feite die iets voor een verkeerd doen direct gecapteerd worden en direct kunnen in feite afgevoerd worden en dus zegt ze de militairen ja, gaan eigenlijk niks meer te doen hebben normaal dan eh, want alles wordt daar gecontroleerd en wordt inderdaad dan misschien bepaalde bepaalde ja, entiteiten zijn die uiteraard moeten ingrijpen als het nodig is en zo verder in wereldwijd. Maar, maar, maar dat gaat hopelijk zo weinig mogelijk zijn. Hè. Dus ja, het ziet er echt heel goed uit, mensen. Carter, we'll, we'll, know, we'll be saying, well, if you go into war, then your part of the Starlink ja. will be disabled. So you won't be able to be part, part of the financial system anymore. Ja, heel het financiële systeem, dus het quantum financiële systeem, zoals ze het noemen, gaat er ook allemaal in verbinding mee zijn. Die mensen, het hangt allemaal aan elkaar. Hè. Dus als er een land zou bijvoorbeeld wel terug in, in oorlog gaan met een ander, ja, dan wordt hij daaruit gehoord uit die charter. En, ja, het is gedaan, hè. ik bedoel, allee, ik bedoel, kan niks meer doen, kan niet meer trainen, kan niet meer financieren. Dus het kan niet meer, versta je? Dus het wordt zodanig gemaakt eigenlijk dat, dat de vrede ja, er zal zijn. Hè. Oh. Because if you've got a system that is able to know things about us in a good way, then it stops child abduction, it stops criminals moving around and trafficking and drugs, because the, the, the quantum system with, in terms of money, it knows if the money is good. And because I understand it to be a digital currency, which is backed by gold, you know, then it, it, it's, it can't be moved around for nefarious reasons. So that there's lots of good that could also be um, obtained by moving into this new system at a higher frequency. We've got to stop looking at it from the 3D perspective. We've got to start looking at it from... Het heeft gelijk, he says, het Starlink zal ook inderdaad zorgen dat er geen druggeld meer is, dat er, dat er geen drugs, dat er geen kindertrafficking meer gebeurt, geen mensenhandel, uh, geen uh, vals geld. Geen, uh, ja, allerlei nefaste negatieve zaken zullen niet meer kunnen, want het systeem zal dat allemaal controleren. Hey, dat, is, dat is fantastisch. Die mensen, die moet niet, we moeten, ik heb, ze zeggen, ik heb dat pas ook al gezegd, we moeten stoppen van het 3D te kijken, want het 3D zouden we dat inderdaad nooit kunnen doen. Onmogelijk. Hey, dat kan, dat, die nieuwe wereld zou er nooit komen, dat is, zou dan inderdaad zoiets zijn zoals bijvoorbeeld uh, de hippies in de jaren 70. Ik was er ook niet ver van op dat moment. Hey. Ik was ook een halve hippie, uh, of misschien heel, maar nee, een halve, maar dat bestond niet meer wanneer ik uh, uh, mijn liefde in dat uh, waren we maar halve hippies niet meer. Eh. Uh, <laughs> maar dus, uh, we, we droomden dan, het eh. was, was niet reëel, maar nu, nu is dat heel anders. De mensen zijn een heel anders te trekken, kijk maar de protesten wereldwijd, dat stopt niet. De revoluties zijn overal deze mensen, dus we zijn echt naar een hoger niveau aan het gaan. Wereldwijd, de aarde gaat naar een heel andere uh, resonantie, de Schumann resonantie. Dus nee, het is niet meer tegen te mensen. Het is gewoon zo, het, God is het aan het doen. Uh, en, en je kunt dat niet tegen houden. Dus het zal heel anders opgevat worden, alles. The higher perspective. And that this new technology is above us. And so it's taking us higher. Oh, you're, you're doing such a good job of this. <laughs> I've got, I, I, I've got I, I, really, yeah. really channels of good stuff. And you, you, uh, You were laying it very, very well. So good job, bravo. So they did say here that the countries all around the world are all currently signing into this uh, new worldwide charter. Okay. 
or template, or if you understand it as Nasara Jasara, that's what they're all signing into. That's the vision that I saw. <coughs> and that the, once all that's done, which I think it might have happened because I saw, I did have that vision of it all linking up, all the military holding hands and then, and then linking into the Starlink. Now, of course, that could be a future vision, so I don't know what the timing on that is. That could have already happened, or that could be something I'm seeing that's coming in the next year or so. Um, but they're saying once that's all happened around the world, then the USA, you'll see something going forward. And then the USA will announce what it needs to announce, and then we'll all start going forward as in a worldwide sense. And everything you're seeing at the moment about election um, fraud and all that type of thing, don't forget, they already have serial numbers. They already knew so everything always, we have everything. They already know everything. Yeah. It's not that that's holding... We have everything. We have simply everything. You understand? That we have all everything. We have have simply everything. We have 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 everything. Red-handed, either so much can eigenlijk op gieter dat betrachten. Bring it up. If they wanted to declare that, they could do it right now, right now. But they're not doing it because they wanted all the other system in place, all the other template in place around the world, so that when they go live in the USA, everyone can go together. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, some people are concerned about the Skylink being. Um, New World Order stuff, and um, I, I feel that we're kind of like back to Atlantean days. We're reliving the Atlantean days, and we're going to push beyond it. Um, during the Atlantean days, it was it was extremely advanced technology, technological wise, and there was a satellite system then, but it was compromised. So there is going to be an uncompromised system that comes through this time. And this is what you're describing right now. So yeah. I think this is uh, fantastic. Well, I think the way that they set it up, if, if it's been, if I've understood it correctly in the way that it's been channeled to me, it's got these, as I keep saying, these stops and balances in there. That's what blockchain is. Blockchain stops and has, it's got a lot of checks in it. Mm -hmm. So when, in the past, when I used to send you money, Michael, we used to go from A to B. So in the cook, we have the blockchain system, so that we can hook in, 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 uh, in, 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 Heel het kabalsysteem moet erop op eten natuurlijk, op ons, op, ons, op ons geld. Maar dat zal verdwijnen. Dus we gaan ook volgens mij geen kosten meer hebben daarvoor. Dus dat gaat gewoon bom pads. En ja, een seconde later staat het te weten bij de persoon dat je wel dat geld naartoe brengt. Ik zei, send Michael 100 pounds en it would, and it would go to your account. Right. In one straight line. With blockchain, my understanding, how they explained it to me, mm -hmm. is it goes through a system of blocks on the way to you, and it's all done in a nanosecond, but it goes through these stops and balances called blockchain, as it's also speaking to the Starlink. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just go in a straight line, which yeah. could be open to fraud and deception. The whole time it's going through the blockchain and speaking to Starlink, it's being... If it's not good, if it's nefarious, it's getting stopped at all those checkpoints. Wow. Mm. That's how they've explained it to me. And um, of course, that's very. Hopefully, I've it verstaan, mensen, but I've heard that the Dineuke have a few different things heard of it on different other levels, but it comes to more than that. So, the blockchain, the blockchain system, has all kinds of controls. But in a nanosecond, so you don't have any time to lose, you can't do it. In a nanosecond, it's still there by Michael, that goes, that's over But that goes so fast, so fast. Niet alleen snel in, in, quantum, in quantum omgeving, maar ook uh, verbonden met Starlink. Dus mag je dat satellietensysteem feiten die heel de wereld controleert, die dus weet wat er niet, va niet vaste kwaadaardige zaken gebeuren of drug en zo verder, he, het, uh, wordt ook automatisch geblokkeerd feiten he, op verschillende niveaus. Dus uh, het is ja, zo fantastisch zijn mensen. Very simplistic. You know, I'm not saying I understand blockchain by any means at all. Um, but you know that's just how they they give me diagrams to explain it to me in very simple terms. Excellent. 
And I think I think I agree with you. Uh, that's that's uh, that's the way I've seen it as well. Uh, so if you were to send me hundred pounds, whether it's through the banking system or PayPal or whatever, they're going to get a piece of it. Yep. Because there's I'm a transaction and all that. We won't have that going forward. Uh, just like if I were to come to you physically and hand you that money, it's going to be the same way. Yeah. You know, yeah. one, no one has to get involved, and that's the whole that's the old financial system, which yeah. is going to be collapsed. Yeah. yeah. And also, the money that moves around now is, is going to have gold backing it. So somewhere in your country is a gold reserve that backs everything that you have in your country. So it's not a piece of paper now that doesn't mean anything. So it's, it can only go from one place to another if it's got something securing it from a gold or silver, you know, backed currency. Um, so I said I wanted to go on asking them a bit more about what's going to happen now going forward. And I said, so, so will the lockdowns um, and the and the vaccine passports and the, the, the lockdowns eh, that were opgesloten worden eh, the 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 in and thing eh, eh, and so further and so further eh, who had that further verlopen eh, masks and all that sort of thing is that all going to carry on until this usa thing is sorted out um and they said yes and no they yeah, said the yeah. above measures are only deemed necessary in those countries or regions where the people are yet to be seen as fully taking responsibility on, on like a personal level. So if they're not sort of taking some sort of personal direction towards standing up for themselves, this is why you, that these countries keep seeing lockdowns and tighter restrictions and they keep hearing that this is going to happen and that's going to happen. Uh, and it's just to, to get you all doing something, to get you all saying, I'm not, I'm not doing that. We, we need to move away from this nanny state. Volgens Michelle, dus uh, heeft ze het doorgekregen dat dat soort dingen, lockdowns, uh, in en dingen, uh, sanitaire passen en zo verder en zo verder, eigenlijk ja, vooral op ons geduwd worden eigenlijk, ja, ons daar dan terug door controle door de whiteheads, door de witte krachten, <coughs> om ons eigenlijk echt te duwen dat we verantwoordelijk, verantwoordelijkheid nemen voor onszelf, dat we effectief verstaan dat we soevereine mensen zijn en dat we dan ook moeten tonen, zoals ik dat pas al in deel 1 gezegd heb, dat we het ook zijn. We moeten ook niet alleen praten over, maar we moeten het tonen. Je moet het tonen op jouw manier dat je werkelijk wakker bent en dat je er klaar voor bent. Right. Um, so it's saying that in countries where people are acting in a more sort of autonomous way, then the restrictions will be lifted. So we're not just waiting on the USA, we're waiting on the people. So I've been, I've been saying the same thing, that uh, people need to get involved. It's, you're, we're waiting for someone to come save us. That's not that's not what's going to happen. We're seeing that's not happening. Yeah. Uh, and, and so when people get involved, as we're seeing, it's not what's going to happen. We were seeing that's not happening. So when people get involved, as we're seeing, like I live in a state where, you know, we don't have that nannyism. Uh, so it's it, yeah. So it's, it's pretty much gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cute. You can use I like that. that. Everyone can use that. That's good if you like that. <laughs> so as as we move forward, that more people are going to be well. Those those guys don't have that. They they have like all this great stuff. Let's do that too. And that's just the way it's going to be. Is and it's it's obvious that's the way it's going to it's going to work out. Other other groups from other other countries, other states, other provinces, wherever we're at in the world, they're going to look at someone else that's taken on this, and they're like, "Well, that's a great system. Why don't we?" Go? And, and then they're going to. Yeah, it's it's going to be you know uh, it'll take time, just like everything does, and it's not going to be forced on anybody. So that's yeah. that's the beauty of the system too, I believe. If nobody had um, told us about the new world order. And this had just all organically happened now. Everyone would think it was a great idea, but because everybody's been programmed with fear for so long around this controlling communist type program, um, then they're finding it difficult now, rightly so, to move out of it. Because everyone's very vigilant at the moment, if they're on the truth side particularly, everyone's very vigilant you know, about what's good and what's bad. And that, that's a good thing. But you also have to not go too far so that you're not open to any change at all. Because 
The Aquarian age is the technological age, and to move into this new. Ik leg ze nu uit dat inderdaad een zeker wij de wakkere leeuwen of de slimme leeuwen eh, en leeuwinnen, eh, wij zijn natuurlijk enorm, enorm, eh, ja, hoe zou ik gaan zeggen, eh, zeer, zeer, eh, ja, och, ik kom nu niet op het woord in het Nederlands, eh, omdat ik zo wel veel langer zijn Frans eh, beluister, eh, dus eh, nerveus eigenlijk, eh, maar we, we zijn eh, echt attent eh, op alles wat er gebeurt en we gaan direct gaan kijken, eh, is dat hier negatief, is dat positief, hoe zit dat hier eigenlijk allemaal, maar zeg ze, we moeten oppassen natuurlijk dat we daardoor in feite bepaalde dingen zouden blokkeren, die noodzakelijk zijn. Was echt het Aquarius tijdperk, waar dat we nu in zitten, en waar we ja, eigenlijk in aan het rollen zijn. Hè? Dus het is hetzelfde zoals met, ja, met astrologische tekens. En op een bepaald moment, ja, dan begint de tweeling, maar ja, ze zijn nog half stier, half tweeling gestaan, dus je rolt erin. Hè? En juist hetzelfde nu, we rollen in dat tijdperk. Hè? We zitten nog niet in de volle energie van Aquarius. Maar zeg ze, dat wordt, dat wordt eigenlijk een hoogte en een hoogte tijdperk. Dus we moeten oppassen natuurlijk dat we het kind niet met het badwater. Uh, Wegkoeien of, of toch dat we uh, het, het tegenhouden in feite. Higher vibration. It also means the technology needs to change with us. So if we're going to have flying cars and cities that look different, all of that is going to be based on. Ja, dat zie je al een aantal keer in feite. Dus de vliegende auto's, eh? dus die eigenlijk in een soort, uh, ja, volgens mij met Nikola Tesla, uh, uh, laat ons zeggen, uh, energie, dus uh, de aardmagnetisme. Eh? Die gaat gebruikt worden, want je ziet daar eigenlijk een soort bol waar we in zitten, een soort, ja, een soort beschermende bol eigenlijk, hé. Um, waar we eigenlijk ja, mee, mee, mee reizen, maar ook de, 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 de steden gaan volgens mij veel, veel verkleinen en, en, en gaan ook ja, heel anders eh, opgebouwd zijn. Dus ja, een compleet andere, andere manier van leven eigenlijk mensen. Nanotechnology, actually, that's what makes it work. You know, if you want to have a flying car that, that moves between grids of light, which is something they've also shown me, I'm actually putting together a video right now of the golden age. And the vision they showed me is that we're being like these bubbles, moving bubbles, so a car, I suppose you call it, but it actually looked like a bubble. And you could actually move between, you weren't, you weren't on anything, you were just in between energetic walls of light. And I wanted to ask you about that, actually, Michael, because when I was uh, viewing Florida a couple of weeks ago, I saw like a wall of light all around it. And I don't just mean metaphysically, like when we're meditating. I felt like there was some sort of um, technology that maybe the military or somebody know about that can actually make a wall of like a wall that's invisible to the eye. But if you were to say send uh, an airplane through it, it would just disintegrate. Now, I don't know if that's actually possible, but if if they if you can create a wall around a whole state like that that protects it, then that would be, I think, how you would fly your vehicles in the future. There'd be like a a grid of light everywhere where your vehicles would be maneuvered through the grids and. These walls of light, I'm seeing them more and more. They're giving me visions of them. And, and I don't know how possible that is. I don't know if you have any information that. And you bring some words as a vision creators, so visions uh, over uh, the. Yeah. Uh, over uh, eigenlijk licht, lichtmuren eigenlijk, eh, die, die dan ook die, die wagens begeleiden, maar die ook uh, bijvoorbeeld bepaalde regio's volledig kunnen uh, omgeven eigenlijk. En, en dus ja, dan eigenlijk beschermen eigenlijk. Uh, ja, dus uh, dat is iets nieuws dat ik nog niet gehoord heb van Michel, dat is nu al voorbereid. You know about that, but that's how they, they kind of visually show me these things. Yeah, I've, I've had those same visions and it's like, you know, technology, Atlantean technology as well. Yeah. As far as like, uh, you know, preventing uh, different things to come in, that is that is a possibility. There there can be uh, an iron curtain that is that can be viewed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that that does exist. Yes. I've actually seen that around Florida. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know for sure if I was seeing a future event or a, just a vision of a possibility. But it, it did really feel like that is there right now. So that any attacks coming in from uh, any potential missile or aeroplane or anything coming through the sky, it felt like anything coming through the sky, I felt like it could just like wipe it out, like create like a 
like dust almost. It just feels like it goes invisible when it hits it. Yeah, because yeah. um, you know, I I I've, I've been in vehicles that have this technology. It's like it's just an EMP field, uh, but the technology um, can be more advanced. Uh, can't put up uh, walls, um, and the, and the, even the walls are programmed to only do it for certain things. So other things like good aircraft can fly through that have a certain transponder on them and so forth. So it allows them to fly through without any problems. So yeah, there is, and you, you could, you're starting to see some of it where uh, some things aren't aren't happening. Like here in Florida, there was a, a hurricane that was coming up and it was supposed to hit Tampa. Tampa is uh, where uh, basically the special forces guys are in Tampa. And uh, that's like their headquarters for, for all the special forces guys. So we know that special for, or I do, uh, most people do the special forces is the, basically that's the, that's the wave of, uh, you know, the future warfare from way back. So most of the warfare uh, over the last decade or so has been special forces type uh, directed. And that's for any organization, military in the, in the world that's advanced. So, um, there was one that was supposed to hit Tampa. I knew that it was going to hit Tampa and uh, it basically stayed offshore the whole time. So yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people were saying there are these fields and I agree with them. There are fields that are protecting. Yeah. Can they be dropped? Can they be uh, compromised? Sure. Uh, if, but they're far more advanced than uh, most people understand or realize right now. I think the thing that when you were telling me about that right then, right now, um, I think this is what Starlink can do. I think this is the, oh, yeah. this, I think this is what we are actually moving into, that this technology is so amazing that we just don't know right now the, all the amazing things that it's going to be able to do. Well, it's, it's going to be much more than an internet as far as I, as far as I can tell. It's much more than an internet. Um, it, it seems like it's going to be um, able to manage a lot of things all at once for the good. Yeah, definitely. Good. definitely. Yeah. That was um, the information. Wow. Great what conversation. Thank you. I'm going to say that the sort of the of light, light mirror or the light mirror, 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 the Dus dat ze eigenlijk wagens hebben die dat inderdaad kan doen. Dus je uh, zegt dat is een technologie, uh, kun je dat hij dan noemde, IMT bezig had, noemde, die kan inderdaad zaken creëren dat eigenlijk, ja, uh, bepaalde zaken niet kunnen penetreren. Dus het, het is effectief, uh, hij is waarschijnlijk al tien jaar niet meer in, niet meer in, in, de, in de seals. Ik weet niet lang dat hij er niet meer in is, uh, Michael. Dus hij uh, spreekt al, ja, dus ook hoe is het ondertussen nog uh, evolueerd. Ik wilde vragen, eigenlijk, was... Um... When I was listening to Gene Deco recently, he was talking about, um, now what did he call it? <clears throat> he said something about something called a coherent beam, which like can, like can dissolve people on, on impact. And um, I just wondered if the Starlink was able to read information like we understand it can, would those old technologies, I don't know if, if those coherent beams are old technology or new, but could the Starlink not read the, like, the code on it or something? So as it was coming to, I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but if it had like a, on the silicon chip or the nano chip, a serial number or something, would the Starlink be able to sort of know it's coming? Like, like with the, we were talking about with the blockchain, it could read it before it even gets into your airspace, maybe. Yeah, yeah. almost, most definitely. Uh, and it would, uh, you know, incapacitate it. So there's lots of, uh, lots of ways to do that already. So it's not a, a big stretch to think that uh, satellites are already doing that. Yeah, so they are yeah. actually doing that. So yeah, that's, that's good. So even the old technologies, um, so I heard a, another channel of saying that there was some events uh what did she call them switch events uh what was her actual terminology I can't find it now but she was saying there was had timed events that was it she was saying that she thought there was some timed events that had been set up by the black cats that were still a concern mm -hmm. and 
um, Jean DK was talking about some of these old weapons that might be sort of set up somewhere ready to right. go. Oh, yeah. And I suppose my question would be, would this new technology be able to read the old technology? So would that still be a threat? <laughs> So, like, we're talking about nanotechnology now, but... Dus we spreken hier over Jean Dico, dat is uh, even uh, zeker een podcast van Jean uh, uh, gehoord heeft, uh, dat Jean sprak over wapens die zouden bestaan. Dat ze met een beam eigenlijk letterlijk, ja, een soort laserbeam. En als je dat, uh, als het op u komt, dat je letterlijk verpulvert eigenlijk, ja, verdwijnt eigenlijk van de, van de aardbol. En uh, eigenlijk, Michelle vraagt aan Michael, denk je dat inderdaad een nieuwe technologie die nu bestaat, die, die onder controle staat van de goede krachten, um, deze oude, uh, laten we zeggen, wapens, je zou kunnen uh, desactiveren? The, but the old technology was just silicon chip, wasn't it? You know, uh, it was just silicon chip with wires in them. Whereas the nanotechnology is, is built differently. So do you think those timed events, if that, if that was was the case, if that was true, if that was a risk, do you think that the Starlink may not be able to read those because of, because they're older in their design? Um, so it's, it's complicated. What, what would and can happen as, as a system comes in to take down a system that's rigged, it has to be careful because uh, if it's linked, like a, if, like let's think of a demo, demolition system. So when I put up a demolition system, I rig it so it's like uh, millisecond delays in between each of the explosions. So think of that as a quantum a quantum system because obviously they have that technology and have that know-how as well. So if I take out, if I notice one of those systems and I take out one of those systems, the rest of the system knows it's been compromised and blows. Oh, so, right. so there's, there's, Stuff like that out there, that's another reason why things are moving at the pace they are. Yeah. So you could take out one thing, but it would trigger all the others. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've just got a couple more things, and then, then that's the channeling done for the 107. Um, I, I said, is the, the plague, the virus, um, a significant part of the worldwide plan going forward. So are we, is it still going to be, you know, chunt, chuntering on? Um, and they said no, uh, that the plague story... Hey, ik vraag ze nu of dat heel het uh, biowapen uh, gedoe, uh, heel het biowapen verhaal in feite, of dat dat uh, going forward, dus uh, nu vanaf nu verder gaat, hey, of dat dat nog een belangrijke gegeven zou zijn. En uh, blijkbaar antwoorden ze nee. Nee serves a purpose as it creates the, the leverage to help these citizens to awaken mm -hmm. so that they start standing up for their human rights and start getting a sense of personal power. So it seems like that storyline might go on just as long as it needs to until those people start getting it, really. Right. But I had some other interesting thing that I put in a recent um, video about the, you know, the, the variant um, names you know, like Delta and Omega, I actually asked them, was that part of a military code to do with where Starlink was up to? Um, because this had been released, I don't know how... Ze heeft ook dat vraag gesteld over uh, die verschillende namen van de varianten op het biowapen, eh? dus uh, zoals Delta, Omega en zo verder, die eigenlijk typische militaire uh, woorden zijn voor bepaalde codes uh, aan te duiden. En nu uh, laat ze hier eigenlijk iets zien uh, van de World Economic Forum blijkbaar, dus uh, ja, de slechte rekken uiteraard. Eh? Dus we gaan een keer verder kijken wat ze daarmee, uh, wat ze nu doen. Valid, this chart was, but it was saying that they were saying the names of the variants and then a, a date. And I think we're currently up to, is it Move? I think we might be on at the moment. What's the variant that we're on right now? Can you remember its name? Which one we're on? The Moo is the one that I've heard. Okay, so they were saying that that one, for instance, was coming in February 2022. Hmm. So I, I looked at that and I thought, I wonder if that is a code for something else, like a military code, so that when right. they shout out to the world, when they shout out, oh, you know, the UK is now on Delta, is that a code to the military as to where they're up to or what they need to execute next? And they said, actually, 
that it was something to do with the QFS. It, it was a military code mm -hmm. at the stage of the where the QFS had been set up. So I'm wondering if it's a code for this charter that they were setting up and where it was up to. I don't, I don't suppose we'll ever know, but I just thought that was interesting. No, I, I agree with you, and that's what I got when I first saw that. Because uh, in the military, when we do an operation, we have timelines, and there's code names, just like on that one, uh, yeah. for when when we're basically going to, or when we have complete, when we have completed a mission, uh, part of the mission, uh, will pass like the move, you know, yeah. for instance, and then every, and we don't need to say anything else because it's you know you, you talk too much on these radio systems, even though they're yeah. encrypted, you know, they still can be possibly you know, hack or somebody can have one of the radios or he, over here or something, you never know. So you're like ultra, you know, and it's it's easier for everybody to have the timeline checklist. They go, oh, they're at moon now. And uh, yes. so that's what I got early on that basically what they're doing is they're sending code that we're on this, this and that's why that, that got released the way it was. And uh, so the bad guys are like, what, what is this? This is not our stuff. <laughs> I was like, and, uh, they're, they're making us look bad here. We're like, we, we, we have a better system than this. And it's no, it's, they're really, I thought that they were releasing, you know, what actually is uh, happening as far as like the time. So we're, we're ahead on the timeline, I think, right now. No, I think so. So basically, you know, we live in the but that the real cool word of the military so say, we're really, like, on the American side, Michel, that it's so well as I have, that the, that the dates lay in the car set around the chart, around the quantum financial system, there's the, the hooey count. Aan de andere kant zegt Michael dan uh, inderdaad dat het inderdaad wel codes kunnen zijn, uh, maar die op een of andere manier naar voren gebracht worden uh, op een, uh, op een laten we zeggen, desinforma desinformatie manier, eh, maar die wel redelijk inderdaad een tijdslijn zijn voor bepaalde zaken die aan het gebeuren zijn op militair niveau. Ik denk zo. De reden waarom ik ook dacht dat het aan het uh, Starlink system, de quantum system, was omdat sommige van die woorden, de quantum woorden, so, so the word like PI, P-I, I don't think that's a military code normally. I mean, omega possibly is, delta possibly is. But some of those words in there, I found them in my quantum physics book for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, wow. Yeah, I thought, well, maybe that's what it is. It's, it's military code for how long, how far along the quantum system is. Uh, you know, yeah, very cool. Um, just want to see if there's anything else you might be interested in. Do you have any questions that you want to ask me? Uh, like a million, but I, you know, I don't want to keep you too long. So, you know, we're, uh, I, I think we, we're, we're doing a lot. If, is there anything else that you want to uh, talk about? So one other interesting vision I saw, mm -hmm. um, was that this is just a few days ago, I saw the whole of South America going golden and I saw infinite. You said, so yeah, I can have a bold visit green, a door green, but as the skills of America, in like a hold, hold and blur in in hold, so I think. Particular Brazil. Now, I know that the quantum financial system or the RV or whatever you want to call it is supposed to sort of all trigger at the same time. But even if that all happened on the same day, I wonder if the starting point in that process would be Brazil. And, I, and that's just something I, I don't know. And, and it'd just be interesting to keep an eye on it to see how that happens. Brazil is uh, is very advanced. And uh, I think they're part of it. Brazil, you see that the protests are very gigantic. Bolsonaro, the president, is for me very good. Alhoewel dat er dan natuurlijk ook die informatie over is, maar het is allemaal complex zoals dat we het al zoveel keer gezegd hebben. Maar goed, het ziet er toch allemaal naar uit dat hij toch uh, aan de goede kant van, de, van het volk staat. Part of the, they're part of the play. Yeah. Uh, on a, on a high level. Yeah, I think they're doing really good stuff down there. Uh, I always got that. I've been in contact with people that are down there. I always thought that, you know, uh, their president was like super high vibration. I always liked him. When I yeah. look at him, I get a really super high vibe, you know, he's an intuitive, so forth. So it's, it's, uh, and they, and of course they, they tried to assassinate him already, uh, and he survived that. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good, uh, Brazil, I think it's, uh, it's interesting. Now, one question I would ask you, and I'm sure a lot of people, uh, wonder about this. 
So we know that, uh, well, not everyone does, but we'll just, I'll just throw this out there that uh, thing that goes into the arm, you know, the type thing. So we, we're, a lot of people are really concerned with that. And I, I've seen some really uh, high numbers on that. What do you see going forward? Have you asked uh, about that? As well? So this is the one that always gets us all into trouble, isn't it? Because oh, yeah. in my timeline, where I am, anybody... You start to ask a lot of people, and you ask a lot of people, and you ask a lot of people, Zijn ze inderdaad uh, zo gevaarlijk zoals dat er uh, wereldwijd gezegd wordt? Uh, zijn er inderdaad ho goede badges eh, die uh, gecontroleerd zijn door de witte krachten? En zijn er inderdaad bepaalde die pure placebo's zijn? Dus hoe zit het ermee? En dat is nu een vraag dat, uh, dat Michelle had proberen te beantwoorden. Everybody that's passing over right now at a soul level decided to do that. Right. Okay, just like if you step out the door tomorrow and you get run over by a bus, your soul before it incarnated, decided that was the way you wanted to teach your family about how you were going to exit. And I see the this storyline being um, a big part of souls deciding to go at this time for different reasons, maybe to bring the people that are left behind up to a new level of consciousness. Ja, het is, echt, het is altijd een heel, heel moeilijk onderwerp om over te praten, maar het is inderdaad, ik heb het al waarschijnlijk eerst gezegd, ik, maar goed, ze zeggen het opnieuw, he, dat, dat ik meestal dat de mensen nu gaan, ver, allee, niet, nu gaan vertrekken eigenlijk. He. Uiteraard super triestig voor ons en zo verder, he, dat het eigenlijk vooral op zielsniveau een zielencontract is, waar dat mensen gekozen hebben om op die manier eigenlijk het, de aardbouw op dit moment te verlaten. Dus sort of contemplating it all, it brings, it makes them go inside. I think we talked about this before when I was here. When you go inside, it helps you to, to raise your consciousness. So uh, I see it like from a spiritual point of view, that's what's going on. In terms of what's going on on the ground, I think some of it is um, probably not the right time for me to say what I think exactly, because there's a little bit of delicacy to some of it. And I don't think people are ready yet. Um, but I am going to be putting together a vaccine, um, a doodah um, session in about a week's time oh, nice. with, with Amy Satori. And I don't know yet if I'm going to release everything that I think I know is happening with it, just because it's a very delicate storyline. But what I would say is that I think that the numbers on both sides are over exaggerated and that there's something not quite right on both sides. And to try and not get drawn into did someone die of this or did someone die of that, try and keep in the middle and don't get fearful because you, if you go either way at the moment, if you listen to all the doctors that are trying to supposedly warn you about you know this and then you listen to all the doctors over here you're just going to get very confused and more in fear and your vibration is going to go down mm -hmm. good try not to keep focusing on on all those things just focus on how do i keep my own immunity high how do i keep well yeah. how do i keep happy how do i keep calm mm -hmm. and, and try not to keep getting drawn in you know and i've i actually lost a friend just a week ago um who didn't have this um and it's all a bit suspicious circumstances again but you know i was told that for his soul he'd been working with me as a student was in his 30s and i was told that he chose to ascend now that's a very high spiritual calling you know this person chose to ascend wow um but, you know they've been working really hard with me and and when we ascend, we have a choice to stay in this lifetime and work at a high vibration. We have a choice to pass over and work from the inner planes mm -hmm. and maybe come back in a new form. But he chose to ascend outside of this plane. So not everything in spirit is deemed as what we call death and sadness. You know, and, and in fact, when I view death from um, the spiritual perspective, it's seen as a celebration as you go into the next level. They celebrate it. The soul celebrates it. I know it's hard for us sometimes to understand at this level, but but when you 
when you can see souls and you can read the other side, you know that actually when they go through to the other side, it's a it's a massive. The angels sing and and they sing over you. It's amazing. It's a, a, an amazing experience. It's yeah. not anything to really be sad about. But because we are humans, human beings, of course we have sadness. But the, the point is, when you understand the bigger perspective, you you can you can be sad. That's okay. But then you can also understand that the soul of that person chose to go in that way. So I've been very diplomatic with my answers there, Michael. When you asked that was, me, that was that was amazing. Very good. Very well said. And yeah, I think that uh, you know people. Are, I see some people in the chat. Med beds aren't real, but actually med beds are actually here in uh, different formats. Uh, they're not called med beds because that would get those people. That is why we have niemand bij ons in Bewuste Burgers kan niet in detail treden die er iets met die, laten we zeggen, methodiek aan het werken is van frequenties en trillingen en zo verder om mensen te genezen. En die heeft ons inderdaad bevestigd dat uh, hij al benaderd is door investeerders die uh, in medbeids inderdaad, uh, oké, okay, we noemen ze dan zoals dat je wilt, zoals Michael zegt, ze worden ook anders genoemd, hey. uh, soms uit bescherming, maar uh, het komt erop neer in feite dat, uh, dat die er wel degelijk is, die uh, methodiek, die systematiek, die, uh, die werkwijze, en uh, ja, die komen er sowieso mensen. In trouble. But the, uh, the vibrational field, that some of these uh, machines that people have designed, that are unbelievable in, uh, in some of the things that you can do. I mean, I go to all kinds of crazy stuff right now that, are, that, that just wasn't available, you know, just a few months ago. And now uh, a lot of stuff is becoming available and they're, it's the way they promote it is, you know, kind of, you're doing it for, you know, weight loss or, you know, to help your breathing or stuff like that. But it's, it's definitely advanced information. And it's really starting to seep out there. I actually have a machine. Sorry about my dog. I think Amazon's just delivered some things that's kind of set them all off, but they'll they'll come down in a second. I actually have a machine called a Rife machine that yep. I bought a couple of weeks back actually, which I'm still trying to learn how to set it up. Nice. Um, but basically it will do a scan of your body on frequency and it will tell you what organs in your body are out of sync. Mm. Then you can set the machine up to then send you beams of energy to balance it. And so, if you needed a particular horse medicine and you couldn't get hold of it, the program in in the system knows what the frequency of that horse medicine is. So you just tell the Rife machine to beam at you the frequency of horse medicine. You don't actually need the actual horse medicine. It just knows the frequency of that medicine and it can send it to your house. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and this this is quite affordable technology, actually. You know, really? everybody yeah. can actually get hold of this stuff um, already. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things that I used to teach people in my angel classes, particularly the one around healing, is you can't heal somebody else unless, unless they're actually ready to let something go and, and actually be healed. So some of it has got to be about them being ready to let that go. Ja, daar ben ik van, van overtuigd. Hè. Dus als je healing of ook met mensen die healers zijn of zo, of het is nu nog gelijk als ze met energie met een ander doen of andere, andere manieren of therapie of praten en zo verder. Als mensen niet klaar zijn, nee, ze zitten daar maar, nee, en ze, nee, maar, maar eigenlijk als ze, zijn ze, dan, ze zich niet open gaan, nee, alleen open, gaan ze hun muren niet gaan wegdoen, ja, dan, kun je, dan praat je letterlijk tegen een muur nee, die gesloten is en, en gaat dat dus niets opleveren. Dus ik ben wel met een akkoord, dus het, het moet altijd van twee kanten komen. De persoon moet ook wel genezen. Absolutely true. Letting things go. And I think, uh, you know, as we move forward, a lot of people are going to start to learn to let a lot of the stuff that's uh, been impacting us over the time for many, many thousands of years, and especially in this now time, to let it go and just let it go and not, not believe that that's, uh, you know, going to influence us, influence us and we have to have it, you know, to move forward. So it's going to be tough for a lot of people because, you know, we've been programmed and we, we think this is the way things should work and to have something else come in like we've been talking about and change all of the things that that we're, you know, 
doing and seeing and understanding, uh, it's it's a, it's going to be quite a leap for people. So it'll take time, but I think uh, as we move forward, those people that do that uh, will be like the people that help other others to you know move in that direction. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry about my dogs. I think there's a delivery going on outside. <laughs> no problem. It's pretty, they, they want to get involved too. They want to sit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Michelle. Thank you so much for uh, coming on. It's all. Thank you, uh, thank you, well, uh, Michelle and uh, Michael, uh, for this wonderful podcast. We have here by later people. Eh? Uh, hopefully, can you uh, hear what on the uh, deal one and deal two? Van nu was hier in het museum kluisteren naar deel 2 van dus de podcast Michelle Fielding met Michael Kajeko. Um, ik vond het zeer, zeer interessant. Mensen, vandaar dat ik het ook naar jullie wilde brengen. Ik heb hier en daar een kleine opinie gegeven. Je kent mij. Hé. Dus um, lieve uh, vriendinnen en lieve vrienden, dank u wel om terug uh, de moeite te doen om dit te beluisteren. Vergeet niet het duimpje hé, to like. Hé. Uh, abonneren mensen, subscriben, 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 zoveel mogelijk. Van ik wil naar uh, interactieve live sessies gaan met jullie. En uh, met YouTube en anderen moet ik een bepaald niveau behalen voordat ik dat kan. <coughs> dus uh, doe de moeite mensen. En uh, uh, ja, ook een notificatie dat je altijd uh, opnieuw uh, ingelicht wordt van uh, onze filmpjes. Uh, en vooral ook delen, 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 delen mensen. Hey, zoveel mogelijk hey, uh, uh, het filmpje delen met andere mensen. Dank u wel en tot binnenkort.